All right. So this is going to be our final segment of the workshop, which is going to be our, um, our presentation for portfolio. Um, and oh, oh, why did the screen just black out like that? Um, so yeah, that was weird. My screen just flickered. <laughs> A little concerning. Um, so I'm going to go over three things. Um, Marmoset Viewer, Sketchfab, our station, actually four, four, four things, and also Instagram. Um, Instagram slash Twitter, I guess. Um, so um, first I'm just gonna show you the uh, final render um, model as is. I'm gonna be turning on fast view because it's gonna lag the stream. Um, but just know this is kind of what I ended up with and that it's not gonna look quite as pretty when I turn this on. I'm gonna turn this on. And we should see, yeah, you can see like all the shadows kind of disappear, which is just kind of how it goes. Um, this is an incredibly important portion uh, that I haven't uh, seen anyone discuss. Well, good. All right. So um, here we are. So what I have here is uh, I'm just going to run through some of the material changes that I did um, and things I did differently. I did cover this a little bit briefly way back. I'm going to go over it again um, for the final light rig. Um, you'll notice I have two versions of Zoe in here. I have her T-Pose version and her Pose version. Um, we're going to be rendering out both. Uh, well, I'm not going to render them now. I pre-rendered them, but uh, that's kind of what I had set up. Um, I have my time of day with my main lights. Again, uh, my main lights are my key light, my two rim lights. Um, I have two rim lights so that I get a nice rim light on both edges. Um, I view them, have them at a slightly different angle. Um, I still have this up from, from the last one, so I'm going to just create a new document. Um, so I have, essentially this is my light rig. So here's my character here as a circle. I have my, oops, I just accidentally got a white color. Um, so I got my two rim lights, right? And then I have my key light, um, which is here, um, pointing down. And then I have my fill light, which points in from the side, and a bounce light that kind of points up from the ground. Um, so if we were to look at the character like this, um, I mean, you can see in the scene, right? But I have my, my uh, key light, fill light, and bounce light. Um, anyway, so my key light is my main light source. Um, and then I have my fill light um, that essentially just softens the shadows a little bit so you don't get this harsh shadowing. Um, so if I turn off, turn this off, you can't really see it all that well um, right now. I think it's because I'm in fast view. Um, it just doesn't show up as much. Um, but it's, it does kind of relax the shadows a little bit. And you can change the intensity to whatever you like. And then the bounce light, uh, is, it does a similar thing. It reduces the shadows. This one's a lot more obvious, actually. Um, and it, I usually give it a, like a little bit of a blue if it's an outside. Um, cause like you get the bounce from the sky off the ground, a little bit of blue light. Um, anyway, and then my two rim lights are just some really powerful white lights, right? And then I have a additional light, which is the ping, um, which I accidentally deleted at some point. I'll just recreate it. Whatever. Um, the ping light, uh, this is you know, I, I like to just get that little sheen in the eye. Um, you don't necessarily get that super easily, so I just create a little light to force it. Um, so that is that. Uh, so that is my, my main light setup. Um, as far as materials go, um, on, the main one, on the main character, on um, Zoe here, um, I have a number of inputs. Now, one thing that is different from when we were doing texturing is I decided to add um, subsurface and I did that with a mask so um, what I did was I just created a simple mask and all it is is the areas that are skin are pure white and anything else is black that's all this mask is very very simple um, and these are pretty defaults I, ch I changed the intensity a little bit the only reason I added them was because the shadows um, were a little bit too sharp and I wanted to soften them off a little bit um, and when you have scattering the shadows become softer. Um, so that's why I introduced the uh, subsurface. Uh, even though I kind of fake it a little bit with the emissive color. Um, like I said when I was texturing, I use a little bit of emissive to kind of force in some subsurface in the ears. You can see a little bit of redness there. 
um, and a little bit in the nose and um, it's it's and from the, and a little bit in the fingertips too is it's from creating an emissive under undertone which I just it's a little bit of a stylistic approach not realistic at all but it does add a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, flair and stylization because you, you get like a very specific area that you want to have some specifics in um, and that's great and then we have our uh, the hair here um, the hair again is using the anisotropic shader um, we painted this uh, texture map uh, on stream way back um, you know we have a specular map uh, and that's that's about the, uh, the oh, yeah, specular color uh, roughness um, I don't know why I have a... okay um, Oh yeah, that's right. Because I don't have to use metalness. I'm using specular instead of metalness. Right. Um, for hair shader, I just I find that metalness doesn't really work very well. Um, so I always prefer to use specular for, for the metalness. Or sorry, for for hair. Um, I you know we 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 went through this last time, so I'm not going to go too in depth. But again, uses the displacement map. We created the normal map, color map, etc. Um, and then once I have all this stuff in, I uh, I go in and I start making things as as nice as possible. Um, so uh, I'll go into a number of settings. For instance, the um, global illumination. I actually usually don't like this, but I did like the result I was getting on this one. You're not going to see it, unfortunately, because I'm in fast mode, so you, you can't see it. Um, I increased the resolution to double here. Um, this is specifically for dithering. Um, so the dither resolution will increase if I increase this resolution. Um, so I make sure that that is set to double, right? Um, and then we have our uh, anti-aliasing, which I increased as well. I think I did. Yeah, I can't remember. I think I increased it. Um, and then I have a wireframe. Um, I set this up ahead of time. Um, I think for your portfolio or for portfolio purposes, it's nice to have like a, a look and be consistent. Um, because if if someone sees an image, they're like, oh yeah, this person did that, right? Um, so I, I always use like a nice little neon blue wireframe. That's just kind of a thing that I like to do. Um, so I always have that and, um, but I, I'll, I'll admit like I'm not, like I'm not as consistent as I recommend being, but you don't necessarily have to be super consistent, but I, I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent with things. Um, I don't know if I covered the shadow caster, but that's pretty straightforward. Everyone you just kind of like add a shadow catch, catcher. Right? Um, anything else that I want? Oh yeah, and then we have some post-processing effects. You know, play around with these. It's important to make sure that things are uh, looking good or the best that they can be. Angry Teapot, hello, how are you doing? Um, so I have set my uh, linear, uh, uh, sorry, my tone mapping. Uh, linear is the default, I just kept it. I added a little extra contrast. I find that things get a little bit muddy. Um, I'm, I always like to add a little bit of contrast. Not a lot, just just a touch to make the, make the edges a little bit more crisp. I just like how that feels. Um, saturation, I always bump that up a little bit too because I feel things get a little bit muddy. Uh, again, muddiness is the thing that I'm trying to fight. It's where things get a little bit gray, um, and I like things to be vibrant and pop. Right? But it depends on what you're going for. Um, I don't add a vignette. It just it makes uh, rendering a pain in the butt. Um, if you want to like do some editing in Photoshop and compiling images, I don't use vignette. You can like if I have a vignette, I'd add it uh, in Photoshop afterwards. Um, I was locked out of my setup six days ago. Couldn't do anything, but at least my it got my setup back. Oh, I'm glad you got it back. Um, that, that's never fun. <sighs> okay, so um, so that covers that portion. Um, and again, like your day, your 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 skybox, you know, play with different ones and see what works best for you. Okay. Um, so with that said, um, once I have everything in place that I'm happy with, um, I start to do my renders. So here's the thing to consider about your renders: is not every angle is going to be the the most appealing angle. Um, no matter what you do, like even like even um, 
like even in reality like you know when you have a, a picture of yourself and then say oh man that picture was terrible it's because like it's just like at a really unflattering angle you can just, like, no matter how good your art is there's going to be some angles that are just not flattering um and you want to make sure that you get the the best shots or the like exactly what you want uh to get right uh, this is like a light room it's like a studio right so if you're like doing photography and um, you want to make sure that you you're just taking the best shots so like um with my pose i will take it and because i put it on a turntable um turntables are good i would highly recommend putting it on a turntable um so that way you can kind of just scroll around like this and the lighting anything that is in um in the turntable will rotate with it which uh, the only thing i have in there is the eye ping but the sky um and the other lights they don't move um because uh they're not linked to the turntable which means that the lighting will stay consistent and i can just rotate the character around um all pictures of me are flat. <laughs> same um everyone's taking offense to that you know what it's okay we can all be ugly together um, but that is not what I was getting at. Um, I'm saying that even if you have a really awesome model, it's um, it's going to have some angles that are not the best. And just don't don't render those. <laughs> don't put them in your portfolio. If there's an angle that looks bad, don't show it. Um, just show the best, right? So like, there's always there's a few angles that I, I I don't particularly like. But anyway, I would pick about three to four angles that are the best angles so obviously like i catered this pose to be from the front so the front is good um i don't particularly like the view from this side um i can't remember so like i had preferred this side i don't know if i actually ended up doing this um, but i do prefer this angle to this angle especially because of the eye patch um and the eye looks a little bit funny on the in this, in this three quarter i'm not a big fan um so i don't necessarily show that and i would show it like this right so i'd render like that um and then i'd render from the back and then make sure that there's nothing cut off so if you have to move things around for specific angles that's cool um and then you just render in three poses right uh three to four um generally three i find is a good number uh don't worry about like getting every single angle just get like you know get a little bit from the back a little something from the side and a little something from the front and you're good to go right and I, I try to get something in like those three areas front side back if they're asymmetrical, you know, maybe the other side is nice, but I generally don't bother. Um, and you're going to do the same for the T-pose, right? You're going to render out the, 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 the pose and the T-pose, um, and that's fine, all right? Now, um, so every time I do that, you just go here, and you're going to go capture image. Now, I go into my settings first. Set these high, make them high, make them big images, you know, go down there and make the highest thing, whatever. Find the, I just find the highest one and I just take it. You can make it whatever value you want, but I'll just take whatever's there. Make sure transparency is on. Um, and that's it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is when I'm rendering an image out, um, is I actually have a uh, version of the same light setup, but the background is set to black. See, I've set the, the, the mode of the background to color uh, black and sky. The reason I do this is because um, when I am... Uh, cropping the image um, even if it has an alpha channel you might get a little bit of the background and if you have a white background or a bright background you're going to get a little bit of buzzing on the edges of the mask maybe it's not quite as obvious all the time but i i generally think the black is the the less the least threatening um, so i usually just make it black and i crop it out uh, that's some nice shading thank you saffron and also hello welcome in um, so again i'll take my renders like that um, when I'm doing the T pose, um, what I'll do is I'll take a render. Um, I'll take a render and then I'll go into my render and then I'll turn on the wireframe and then I'll hit render again. So I have things that line up. And again, I'll take, you know, three to four angles. So I'll take like a front, maybe three quarters side and then back um, is what I normally do. Okay. Um, so then I have all of my images there, right? um and then after i've done all that i'll go in and i'll say okay i want to have a couple close-ups uh, and this is again about flattery or like having like the, the the best angles like maybe i don't like how the shadow falls on the face you know if i don't like how that shadow is at that angle maybe i'll just rotate the character a little bit so that the shadow is you know a little bit off the nose because i don't particularly like where it was or something like that right and then i could be like okay i'll take the shot like that um and again it's just it's just a matter of 
really taking the best shot you can, making it as good as possible, and then carrying on, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, with that, we would have all our images. So let's say I, I, I hit render for all of those, and we're good to go. Um, now that that is set up, um, once I have my images, um, I would go into my, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'd create a, uh, and compile a bunch of, uh, uh, shots. So, um, let me open up my display setup. Hey, Giovanni, how are you doing? Soli's art piece? Um, no. Um, okay, so this is my setup. Um, similar look, oh. Uh, okay, so the, the base here is, um, I keep things simple, like, I don't worry about having this flashy background and all that stuff. My background is just gray. It's not even a color. Um, I don't want the background to distract. Um, I, I always prefer to have like just a nice clean gray background. Um, otherwise, it's just too much noise. It's too busy. You can put color if you like. Um, some models will have like a nice, like a brighter background if it's like a brighter character or something like that. Because um, it does set a little bit of a mood or a tone. Um, but I mean, generally it's pretty clean. Um, you know, I added a subtle gradient. Don't necessarily need this. I almost liked it better without, um, but you know, a little bit of a gradient is nice. Um, and maybe a little bit of a decal. And if you do stuff like this, I don't do this, but I do recommend doing it. It's just, you know, have it, have it the same for all of them, right? So like all your models have this kind of like little box with the gradient and stuff like that. Hey, Scatman. Welcome in. What's going on? I'm just doing the last uh, video of um, of the workshop. We were talking about um, rendering your models and putting them up on your portfolio and getting all that stuff ready. Um, okay, so we have a background there, a bit of a gradient, and the little box decal, and your website. Um, you know, maybe you don't have a website. Maybe it's just your Twitter tag. Anything. Um, if someone just sees this image on their own. Right, like maybe they don't see it on your media. Maybe it's like shared on Pinterest or something. Having this is important because then people can find you. Right, you want you want people to find you. So have have your website or something on the page somewhere, um, anywhere. Uh, that's important as well. But again, so the big things here: keep it simple, background, put your logo somewhere. Right, that's all you need to know. Um, then after that, um, I have imported all of my images. Right. Uh, from my render and normally what I'll do in, in the case of Photoshop is I'll do like uh, scripts uh, load file into stack and then I just select all the images that I have rendered right so you just go browse and find them and then I would just group those and then make a duplicate you don't have to make a duplicate but um, just like place those around right so uh, for my wire you know I just place these out uh, the only thing to note here is because they had the shadow um, they did overlap a bit, so what I ended up doing is uh, for each of these, I just created a little bit of a mask, and all I did was I went in here and let's just delete a mask just so I can show you. Um, so let's say I delete this mask, delete layer mask, right? And then we say like right click, uh, or sorry, no, not right click. We'll just create a mask with this button, um, and then we're gonna hit. Uh, make sure you're selected on the layer mask, right? And then you take your gradient. Make sure the gradient set to black and that it's black to opacity. And then I just drag and select like that and just kind of like fade off the shadow before it hits the next uh, image. Um, and that's it. So I have my wireframe, um, my typos, right? Um, without wires. You don't necessarily, like, I see a lot, like, not a lot of people post wireframes. I wish people would. Because, <laughs> like, actually at work, I've been, uh, I've been trying to help with hiring. And it's very hard to tell if someone is uh, knows what they're doing if I can't see their wireframe. No one really posts their wireframe. I wish they would. Um, so I do recommend posting a wireframe. Uh, then I have my pose version. Um, again, like I have fewer pose versions 
then I do the T-pose, and the reason for that is just because the T-pose takes up less space, right? Because the sword, like, it's a bigger render. I'm trying to, don't make these too wide. Um, try to keep them not too wide. That's another thing to, have, to keep in mind, too. It's like, I've made this mistake in the past where I had this really wide image, and you see everything super tiny on, on ArtStation or on your portfolio site because it's filling the page, and you only see, like, a little tiny portion of it um, because it's just, it's all crammed together in this really tiny, long strip. Um, doesn't look good. Uh, you mean 32-4 is not a good aspect ratio? No. No, that's bad. And then I also have my close-ups. You'll notice that they're, they're a bit sliced here. And the reason for that is um, because, again, they're close-ups and they're cropped. Um, and because they are cropped, I actually reduce the image size. So I actually have a second background that is the size of the original renders so that I can crop the image to export these guys um, later. Also for close-ups, I do remove this little box. I find it's distracting for close-ups. Don't need it. But like again, I'm just focusing on the close-up shot. I take it out, um, and I literally just have a very, very, very simple background. So for the the exports of the uh, close-up shots, I just remove that box entirely. And I can show you some of these uh, images. So like this is my render for a close-up, and then I have my posed image here. Right? Excellent. All right, um, so that's um, most of the images. The only other thing that I wanna do now is talking about social media and Instagram. Now, Instagram format specifically is square. Um, you can have rectangular, doesn't really work that well on Instagram. Um, and uh, I don't recommend it. Because again, like if people are scrolling through and they see like you're, all the images that are square are going to be really big and then the rectangular ones are going to be smaller because they crop them vertically, right? So you're going to have like your little small image and then it's not going to really be as noticeable as other images when people are scrolling. So I highly recommend um, creating a different display. Um, so I've created a display specifically for Instagram. And I think this format works very nicely for Twitter as well. And each shot um, that I render out just has one angle. Um, so I have just the four angles um, and then one close up. I don't go too crazy with the with media, right? Like um, the media could have a link to your art station that has more uh, art. And then I just kind of focus on, um, on getting the, uh, just the, the, base, the base images out, right? So. Uh, just like just enough to kind of see what's going like again on social media. No one gives a shit about construction No one's gonna care about your t-pose and no one's gonna care about your your uh, Your uh, wireframe no one gives a shit um, So just you know have, a, have your poses have a nice close-up Excellent. That's all you're gonna need for social media um, If people want to see more um, They're gonna link to your art station or your website and you can have all those details there People who are hiring are going to be looking more at your art station and stuff like that anyway. Um, so that's what you're going to be focusing on. And again, I have my website up here, um, you know, just so that people can find me if they just see the image on its own. Okay. So that's it for images. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the uh, Marmoset viewer and the Sketchfab viewer. And then we're going to talk about, you know, posting on ArtStation. And then we'll be done. Okay, so Marmoset Viewer. Um, the first step here is that I, I'll keep the background for the viewer, but the viewer has a lot of limitations. Um, the, the biggest limitation is the number of casting shadow lights. Um, so for instance, I cannot have a, I can only have three uh, shadow casting lights. So the uh, ping, make sure that shadow casting is off can't cast shadows. Make sure it doesn't go too far um, so that it doesn't like appear in the back of the head or anything like that. So you can change the range, uh, the distance of this so that it, like if, it, if I did this, I think it will show up on the back of the head or something like that. Um, or on the sword because it doesn't cast shadows. Yeah, it shows up on the sword, see? And that doesn't look very good at all. Now does it? Yeah. Um, now the rim lights, um, unfortunately, if I turn cast shadow off on those, you're going to get this really intense rim light. It doesn't look good. So I usually what I'll do is I'll, instead of sacrificing cast shadows on these, I will just sacrifice one of my, my rim lights. 
and I'll just have light shine on one angle. You know, at least I have a little bit of a rim, so it's even if I only have it on one axis on one side, it still looks nice, right? Uh, another thing to keep in mind when exporting, um, make sure your lights are parented underneath your skybox because you can rotate the light in the viewer and it will take uh, any lights that are parented underneath the skybox along for the ride. Anything that's outside of that will not rotate. Um, so that's important as well, right? Um, so we have now, if we look at our lights, we have uh, the bounce light, um, does not have cast shadows, the key light does not, and then we have our rim, oh, sorry, the key light does, key light does, key light matters. Um, and sorry, I made a mistake. The bounce shouldn't have cast. Sorry, the fill shouldn't have cast, but the bounce should. Yeah, I want to have I want to have cast on bounce. Um, I like that because it gives you like a nice rear shadow. Anyway, um, it's all up to you, right? Maybe you don't want to have like this really intense uplight cast, but I wanted it. So it, you you basically just sacrifice whichever lights you feel are, are least important. But I found like the the um, the fill light didn't really make much of a difference other than having that extra shadow. So I didn't care too much, right? Um, anyway, so I sacrificed the fill light uh, cast shadow. Um, and that's it. So then what I do is I go into my thing and then I say export Marmoset viewer. Uh, you, know, put in, you can put in some information here. I usually like to, right? So like I'll put my website. Um, name, character, whatever you like. Um, this will give you the warnings of things that are not going to be supported or exported. Well, that's fine. Um, the reason why I do the, like, the light specifically is because otherwise it's going to choose which ones cast shadows and which ones don't for me. And I want to make that decision. So that's why I care about that. But like it just turning off the parallax map, don't care. Um, there are no area lights, so I don't care. Uh, secondary reflection on the hair. I mean, I know which one's a secondary reflection. I've defined it. That light blue, I know it's going to be going away, so it doesn't matter. I'll be losing that. And then you just export it. Um, I, I never really use the straight to, to art station tool. Um, I usually just export and drag it in manually. You can explore that if you want, but I, I haven't. So I just export it. Um, and that's it. Um, so that is the Marmoset viewer. Um, and then I'll end up with my Marmoset viewer file. Okay. Uh, into Lurk for dinner. This is all great info, though. Uh, thanks for all the tips. Yeah, no worries. Enjoy your dinner. Okay, so with that said, the next step or the next thing that we're going to be covering is uh, the, the, uh, the, the, shoot, I'm stumbling over my words, uh, the Sketchfab viewer, okay? So I pre-uploaded this ahead of time because uh, I do not want to be uploading while we're streaming, you know? Uh, that is not necessarily all that helpful. Right? So, uh, this is the Sketchfab viewer. Uh, it's going to take a second. There we go. Okay, now hopefully I didn't drop frames. It didn't look like it. All right, so this is what I got when I imported the model. Um, it's mainly just going to take textures that you have set up in Maya. And obviously, because I don't have all the textures set up, it doesn't take everything, right? Um, so that is something to keep in mind. So first things to do, um, field of view, you know, I, I'll, I'll usually just go through these in order uh, just because it, it's nice and clean. Um, I'm not doing, like, if I was doing something that was like cell shaded, I'd probably do shadeless. Um, but because I'm not, this is going to be lit. Um, let's see, background. I'm not a big fan of the big white shine background, right? Um, we can try different, uh, we got the environment, but we have images. I have a few in here. I have a galaxy back here? I don't remember this. When did I use that? That's kind of cool though. Um, this is kind of like white gradient background. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Maybe I could use it. Um, this is for a, another project that I just won for consistency that all the characters have that same thing. You got the clean dark. I mean, like these are interesting, but I, I don't like that it has a logo on the back. Um, and we have just like a, a kind of slightly textured background that I had from before, you know. Um, 
but you can generally just keep it pretty clean, right? So like even like I usually just do a nice, nice clean, solid color, right? Um, and that's fine. So whatever you like. Um, okay. And then we go into our lighting settings. Um, so lighting is important. Um, uh, you know, almost I would almost say the most important. Um, so by default, it's just going to give you one light room. So we can start with the light room. Um, and pick one that fits nicely. This is pretty close to what I had in Marmoset, which I liked. Um, but it might be a little bit too intense um, in this example. So, you know, just like play around with different ones and see what we're not, not, not too, too orange. Um, road. Let's go with the road. Um, cool. And then you can change your orientation, of course. Um, so that's all well and good. Um, but the thing I care most about is these two things. One is the lights. So having lights casting, I can create my uh, three-point lighting that I adore. Um, so we got our key, um, our back, and then our bounce. Um, I'm not liking these initial positions. I'm going to change them. I want them to be similar to what I had before. Um, so we're going to put the key light this way. This is where I want my key light to be. Um, and these are all directional. They're not uh, cones. I could change them to be um, point lights or, or, uh, or a cone, but um, I'll leave them as directional. I think it'll be okay. In this case, I think it'll be fine. Um, so we got that. And then uh, what else do we want? Uh, we got our bounce. Point. We're going to put the bounce light on there. The bounce light, kind of like that. And then we got our fill. Our fill is, or sorry, not our fill, our rim light. Um, it's going to be like that. I'm always a little bit skeptical about putting a, a, um, a rim light in a 3D viewer because people can rotate around. So if they rotate through the back, obviously the rim light's not going to look all that great. It's a, it's a compromise of what you want to do, right? But we can just test, see what difference they make. So you can see like a nice rim light. And I, was, I, I, I like the rim light. Rim lights are nice. Um, I wish I could name these. I don't think I can, but that's okay. I know that this is my rim light, my fill light, and my bounce light. I'm uh, sorry, my key light and my bounce light. My bounce light kind of doubles as a fill in this case. Oh boy. Did my mic just disconnect? I'm sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. Um, my headphones died. And I Okay, sorry about that guys. It shouldn't be as much of a problem now. Hopefully. Um, I just fixed my mic and my headphones. Okay. Um, everything is disconnecting and reconnecting and I'm sorry. All right, anyway, let's fix this up a little bit. So the, the, the fill light, um, fill bounce light is a little bit too strong, I think. Everything's feeling a little bit muddy. I'm not getting any shadows at all. So I'm gonna incre decrease the power of that. Um, I think my key light might be too strong as well. 
Um, all the master. The, wait, Ma Owl the mastermind. Thank you for following. It took me a minute to parse. She looks so cool. Thanks, Shiny. How are you doing? We're just about finishing up um, the uh, workshop stuff, so we're we're getting there. Okay, we got our bounce, and I think I'm. I want to have a little bit of a balance here. I think. She's getting a little bit blown out, so I'm going to darken the, uh, the fill. Just making some lunch nice. i got to make some lunch <laughs> in a little bit after stream. Um, okay. We got our key. All right. I think that's pretty good. Um, and now that we have that set up, we're going to turn on our shadows. Those are just, I, love, I love shadows. Shadows just make the character feel like they're grounded and they're, they're somewhere, so I make sure to turn shadows on. Um, let's see what options we got here. So we got our border fade, nice little bit of fade here. Intensity, maybe a little bit less. I think it's a little too sharp, so I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Um, this is the ground height, which I'm not going to be changing. And this changes the, the distance that the shadow can, can travel, which is uh, nice as well. If you had like a, a more lower angle light. Uh, okay, so next, materials. Uh, this is the fun one. Um, so we're going to start with, well, I guess we'll just do these in order. Well, no, let's start with the one that, that's the most obvious, which is her. So you'll notice that her normals are all jacked up. And this is because uh, it is using, uh, it is inverting my normals. Um, because if, if in some engines, normal in, normals are the other way around, right? If the, the uh, Y channel or the green channel is inverted, uh, for instance, in, uh, in Unreal, it's inverted. Um, so it is uh, by default making it inverted and all I got to do is go into the normal map and turn this off and then my normal maps are fine if um, it might be different for you depending on like how you bake your normals of course right? I don't like that the, uh, the key light is actually going through the nose that shadow there we go that's better <laughs> um, Hmm. I'm wondering if I can change the shadow bias. Yeah, that's better. I just want to get rid of that kind of shadow. I'm going to get this really intense uh, light, but I think that's fine. We get a little bit of artifacting. That's okay. I can live with that, I suppose. Hmm. You know what, maybe I do prefer to have it there. Ah, whatever. Um, that's fine. Okay. I just wish that this shadow was more intense, but the other one kind of overtakes it. Oh! Oh. That's weird. It had shadow casting off. Alright. Um better and then we can change the shadow bias no nah. let's leave it where it is anyway back to materials um that's a lot better now that it has the shadow casting uh okay so we got our base color our uh, metalness map we need to add now one thing to keep in mind is when you import the model like i said earlier it's not going to import the textures that aren't attached to the model when you export from Maya. So my metalness and my roughness, I had to import afterwards. And you can do that by managing textures and then just importing anything that's missing. So not a big deal. Uh, Dragon Lady over there, like uh, Evil Link through Twilight Princess cutscenes. Oh yeah, because of the eye. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, okay, so we're going to put in the metalness map. Um, where are you? Um, wait. What? Ah, it didn't retain it. That's interesting. I had imported these earlier, but it didn't keep any of it because um, I had not applied them. So if they're not being used, I guess it just deletes them for optimization purposes. Let me hide my screen for a second, and I'll just re-import those. Which is unfortunate because I was hoping to have everything imported ahead of time. 
but here we are. All right, so metal roughness. I mean, it makes sense because like you don't want to have like loose textures in there that aren't being used. But let me just bring those in. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, my internet is much more horrible now. Oh, that sucks. I can't watch you at uh, 1080p, 60fps without buffering. Like, oh, that sucks. Some of the buffering might be from me. <laughs> I could see that being the case. Um, there it is. We got our metalness now. I keep moving the, the light accidentally. Um, and then we're going to do specular. Uh, we aren't using specular. So I'm just going to make that a nice value. I'm going to switch this to roughness. We're going to check, select our roughness map. Uh, do, there it is. Perfect. Yeah. Now she's looking like she's supposed to. Um, okay, so that's good. Uh, machine we're not using, displacement we're not using, anisotropic we're not using on this one either. Subsurface, I haven't played around with this enough, but I will be putting that, whoa. Okay, we need a subsurface mask. I sure hope that I imported it, and I don't think I did. Oh, there it is. Excellent. Cool. Okay, so we got our mask. Um, and we are going to reduce the translucency a lot because that's way too much. Oh, it's applying on everything though. I wish it wasn't. Um, thickness factor. Make sure that this is pretty low. Let's have a little bit of subsurface. There we go. We want to be careful not to have it too much because what ends up happening is it just makes everything muddy. But this is just going to soften the normals and the lighting a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that it's uh, you know, decent. Uh, I would appreciate the tutorial about baking the uh, fills onto a plane. You need to convert a normal map or an opacity map. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. But I do have a video on, on, on baking and stuff like that and texturing. Um, okay. Uh, cavity, we're not using. Alpha mass, we're not using. Opacity. Um, part of me wants to say there is opacity, but also part of me says there isn't. I don't remember. Her hair has opacity. I don't think she herself has opacity. Yeah. Okay. Um, base rendering, doesn't matter. Uh, emission. We do have an emissive map, and that is being applied. We can change the intensity of it. Adds a little bit of. You can see the redness that I'm adding to the ears with the with it. Um, that looks good. Great. I'm gonna save. And carry on. Okay. So the next step. Uh, is let's fix the eye up, all right? Because um, you know you gotta satisfy Waffle. He's not he's not having it with the creepy eyes. Um, so we're gonna choose the eye texture. Oh. <laughs> um, all right. And now we're going to apply a. Um, you know, before we go more into the eye, let me fix the uh, occlusion around the eye. I just want to have the eye color on there. Um, so we're going to just pick this and we're going to pick texture. Is it in here? Did I import it? Uh, no. Uh, let me hide my screen and just import that real quick. Um, okay. 
Okay. There we go, imported. And now we're gonna make sure that there's no specular. Um, and we're gonna have no gloss. I just want it to be a shadow. And then we're gonna turn on alpha masking. Hmm. Okay, something is not, oh, sorry, not alpha mask, I want opacity. And I have to plug in the same texture for the opacity. There, there we go, perfect. Um, so that's good. And now we can go back to the eye. Um, unfortunately, there's no, there's no uh, parallaxing for the eye, so we can't have that here. Um, obviously the other viewer couldn't have it either. It's just, you know, a limitation to web viewing. Um, but that's okay. Um, okay, so we got our thing, specular. I'm not going to put anything in there. Um, I'm going to put this maybe gloss up and then make this, well, there we go. I want to have it so that it kind of has that nice little sheen on it, right? Um, so maybe I'm just going to increase this a little bit. Uh, there. Uh, ever just apply eyeshadow directly onto your skull layer? <laughs> Sometimes. You gotta. Uh, okay, so that is good. And we can apply our normal map. At least get a little bit. We're not going to flip green. Choose texture. We're going to go into our eye normal map. Um, and that just gives us a nice little bit of a, a lighting variation. You can see how the light catches the bottom of the uh, the eyelid now, or the uh, sorry, the iris. Yeah, bottom of the eyelid. Yeah. Um, so there's that. And uh, I think that's going to do it for us. All right. That's good for the eye. Uh, and next is the hair. Hair is fun. Uh, hair has metalness zero. Specular. Um, for hair, where is it? Here, I used roughness, so we're gonna actually have to invert that. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, so we're gonna have to have nothing here. Uh, we're just gonna make sure that this is a little bit lower. It's in the roughness that we're gonna have to put in the uh, hair roughness. Oh. Okay, and then we're going to turn it on to uh, anisotropic. We're gonna use this, and we're gonna put a texture in there. Um, again, wrong texture. Let me let me import that. Uh, there we go. Uh, like so. Okay, uh, and that's selected. And we're going to swap which is like that because right now um, how we painted it, it's it's going to be uh, the lines are vertical, but we want to invert them. Um, and then maybe we are going to, I actually don't know what the factor is going to be. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's to like add a little bit of a rotation to it. I see. Um, we're not going to do that. Um, and then we're going to turn down the intensity of this. just want to have like a little bit of a subtle sheen. It's not, yeah. there we go. I feel like I made a mistake here on the side for some, somehow. Uh, I'd have had to paint that a little bit differently, I guess. Uh, oh, wait. Sorry. The texture wasn't applying. I'm like, why does it look bad? Because <laughs> I had factor selected instead. Okay. Clearly. Clearly, I, I should go lie down. Um, okay. Um, and that's fine. We could add like a little bit of specular color, maybe. Um, wait, or never mind. No, we can't. This is just grayscale. Um, I was gonna say maybe we wanted to make it a little blue, but I don't think that is a thing. All right, so that is fine. And then we also need our opacity um, because we have uh, some. We have the, the the tips of the hair kind of dithered off. This is one thing that I like about Sketchfab more than um, than uh, the the 
the Marmoset viewer is um, you can have true opacity if you wanted. I know that there is always the potential for um, draw order issues, but the option is there. Whereas in, in uh, the Marmoset viewer, you can only have dithering. Um, but in the case of just viewing one character, I'm not, there's no opacity or um, draw order issues that could come up because it's just um, one model. So that's the hair. Then we got our sword. We're going to introduce our metalness map for the sword. Um, where is it? Sword. Oh, did I not import that either? No, there it is. Sword metalness. Um, Another reminder is I don't use 100% white for metalness um, because I want to have kind of like a stylized, more matte looking metal. Um, and then we're going to inc include the roughness map. Uh, sword roughness. Boom. And that's looking pretty good. Now we got to fix our normal map, which has the inverted normals fixed. Pretty nice, right? That makes you looking pretty good. Um, excellent. And now we're going to have some post-processing filters. Again, we want to make things look as nice as possible. Maybe a little bit of ambient occlusion would be nice. Well, this is another thing that I had in the Marmoset viewer that I didn't bring up, is I did have a little bit of ambient occlusion. Um, I forgot to mention that. But I'm going to reduce the uh, amount of it. I don't want a huge amount, just a little bit. You can see it kind of just frames the head and some of the areas a little. It's nice. Um, very, very subtle, very, but uh, does, does good work. Um, and then we have, what else can we have? Um, in this scene, I think a vignette might be nice. Um, because again, um, we're not rendering out images, so a vignette for our viewer here is, is, might be good. I probably could have done that for the Marmoset viewer too, before exporting, but oh well. Um, tone mapping. Uh, like before, I'm going to increase the contrast by like 0.1 or something like that. Nope. Less than that. A little bit, but not quite that much. Um, yeah. Okay. Just a little bit more contrast and a little bit more saturation. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, then we got our color balance. I think that's fine. Uh, sharpness was the other thing I wanted to increase. Just a little bit of sharpness. I just, I like things being a little bit more crisp. Hey, Motsi, welcome in. How are you doing, my friend? All right, I think that looks pretty good. I think that's too much sharpness, though. There. Excellent. All right, we're going to save that. Um, so I think uh, I totally just DM'd a random person thinking it was you on Discord. Oh no. <laughs> My friend, did uh, you do a post about Magic Voxel on Sketchfab? Uh, oh yeah, a long time ago. Um, I'm part of the Sketchfab Master Program. Um, so I did, um, I did tutorials for them a while back. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let me get Sketchfab Master Program. Yeah, it's like it's like a group of volunteers that um, that just like help out on like voting on uh, on uh, the uh, art contests and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just something that I, I was doing a long time ago before I was working, and I I don't do as much with it as. I did back then, but I help out here and there where I can. Um, yeah. Uh, Anti-aliasing is on. I like the anti-aliasing. All right, so that's good. We're saving this, and we're going to exit this now. Um, now we should be able to see it here. That's cool and funny. I didn't realize you had done uh, so much uh, done uh, much boxing stuff. Oh yeah, I used to do a bunch. Um, I, when I was uh, freelancing, well, 
I say freelancing, but I did like four jobs or something. <laughs> when I first graduated, I was doing a little bit of freelance work, um, sort of. Like I was trying to freelance, but I couldn't get any work because you know how it is when you start out. Um, but most of the time I was just making assets for a friend. And because he couldn't really afford to make like really high, high detail models or anything like that or anything really, um, I ended up just making a lot of voxel stuff for him. Another thing I forgot to mention is uh, you want to save a pose, right? So once you have this render, just save a view. Um, so that, that's going to be the view that becomes your icon. And also when you load up the scene, that's what it's going to be. Um, what else do we want to do? Um, so now we also want to edit the properties. Um, so title, I just made it the name of the character. This is another thing too, is like I've had people ask me about descriptions and stuff. I don't care about descriptions. I never really read it. No one cares. Um, I don't bother putting anything in there. You could if you want, but I don't bother. Um, categories, you know, categories are important for searchability, so we're going to put some in there. Characters. Um, is there, I believe there was like a fantasy section or something. Um, no. I think that's going to be fine. Add tag, and then it's going to be like demon. Dragon, I don't know. You know, put in some tags that are, are helpful. Character. Um, yeah. Um, allow texture inspection. Sure. Uh, age restricted content, no. No download. Um, and uh, that's that. We're going to save and publish. Workshop character, yeah. All right, and now we can copy this link, or hold on, let me just get this on the screen. <laughs> I gotta see my model. Okay, cool. So I just said see my model. And then I have this. And now that we have this ready, we've done all the viewers. Um, we've done two viewers. We've done the textures and the renders. So now we're gonna look at ArtStation as our last thing. <laughs> Laura Mipson, yeah. Um, and next is uh, Art Station, which I I have set up. Oh yeah, wait a minute. It's, it's the same window, isn't it? No. Well, let me have my screen for a second. All right, let me, ah, there it is, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna show my screen again. All right, so this is what I did. Um, uh, I pre-uploaded these images beforehand because again, I didn't want to upload stuff on stream. Um, so these are all the images that I just went through. Um, I, I will say order is important. So like I put my, my money shots first, right? So like I put my nice turn and some close-ups um, and then I put my viewer after that if people want to see more details. I don't put the viewer first because this isn't the best view of the character. Um, and it's, it's not because like it, it has limitations of a web viewer, right? So you can't show the shadows. Uh, like it, sorry, you don't have as many cast lights. You don't have like the secondary reflections and stuff. So this isn't your money shot. But if they want to view other angles, they could with the Marmoset viewer. Um, but these are the, the important shots. And then if they want to see even more than that, we can have our little construction shots at the bottom. Um, and again, didn't bother with the description. Uh, you know, pick your categories. This is important for searchability. You know, put in the software that you used, some tags, you know, classic stuff. I make sure that I like to have my portfolio organized, so I make sure that that's in portfolio. I also created this icon. Um, you could use automatic ones. I don't really like doing that. I usually like to create a, a separate one. And all I did was I just created an image and this, it just, it's just this. It's just a gray background with the character uh, outfit out. Um, and I dragged that in. And if we want to add the Sketchfab viewer as well, we could. Um, so we have our Sketchfab viewer. Save. And that's going to go in there as well. Um, the, the nice thing about doing this is it kind of connects my medias together. So if people are on here. Um, they will be able to get to my uh, Sketchfab. Why do I have two of them? Uh, are you sure? Yes. I don't know why that imported twice, but it did. Um, 
And that's it. We're going to save it. And, uh, and that's it. And then we just hit publish. We're done. And you could, I never really use these share to Twitter. I usually do them manually. And the reason for that is because then I can put a custom image because otherwise it's just going to use this image on my social media. Not, not, a, not a biggest fan of that. Um, so if I was to go on Twitter, I would go in and I'd use those images that we tailored for uh, Instagram and Twitter and post them there. Um, but that's it. Um, I'm going to open up the lens that viewer again. Um, so that's, that's officially it for the workshop. Um, I hope everyone has been enjoying following along for these last few months. <laughs> So I can't believe it took like three months to get through all of this content. Um, it, I know it's a lot, a lot of it's rambly. Um, it's, it's a live stream, right? It's not like a tailored edited videos or anything like that. Maybe in the future, I'll go through the footage and, and edit it to make like some more compact versions of it. I don't really have the time for that right now, but the content is all there. Um, and uh, I, I really do hope uh, that it was helpful. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm always here streaming, um, again on, uh, twitch.com slash, or twitch.tv, sorry, twitch.tv slash stop creates. Um, and, um, you can also post questions in the comments of any videos that are uploaded. Thank you for the bits, Becca. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the recording now, um, but I hope you all enjoyed this and uh, got something out of it. <laughs>